You went to Australia for a day. For a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's commitment. <laughs> What the goosebumps? <laughs> so how did you first get into cricket? So I've actually got an older brother. He played both cricket and football. So I guess like from a really young age, I just sort of copied him really and was um, playing in the garden and stuff like that. And then played at my local club from sort of probably eight or nine. Yeah. And then I've been like in the length system from nine or 10 years old really, come right through. Mine's literally the same, like I've got an older sister. Oh, and okay. she used to play mainly football rather yeah. than cricket. But I feel like when you're a young kid, you do every single sport possible. Like when I was 15, I had to make the decision whether I was going to carry on cricket or football because I was at like pretty good level for both. But I chose the right sport in the end. I was exactly the same, really. Played both from a young age at quite a decent level and um, just felt like I needed to commit all my time to one sport, really. So I so went with cricket, but like you, I probably reckon I've made the right decision. What do you reckon has been the biggest changes in women's sports since from like when you started to now? I think one of the main things is visibility. I feel like when I was younger, I couldn't see a clear pathway to be like a professional footballer or a professional cricketer. Growing up, it was sort of hard to see that and I had to be in a boys team, train with boys all the time. And nowadays, you don't necessarily see that as, as often because there's so many more girls playing football. There's so many televised games. You see a lot more young kids realise that things like that are possible and that's when you get more girls involved in the game. People have learned that like, if you do put it out there, there's an audience that want to watch it almost. Um, and the same really, I never thought when I was a kid that I could play professional cricket unless I played for England. That was never an option, which is why I went to Loughborough Uni because they had like a cricket programme that allowed you to train like a professional and still study at the same time. So I ended up going there, doing a degree I didn't want to do, just so I could do cricket, really. And I guess when I was younger as well, there was no female role models um, in cricket, really. And I guess there is now, and hopefully that'll inspire younger kids to get involved. You don't realise yourself that you're like that we're role models yeah, now. Like, definitely, yeah. I yeah. don't even realise it, even though you sort of look back and see how much has gone on, and you see little kids wearing your shirt yeah, and things yeah. like that, and you're like, wow, I'm actually, wow. Yeah, I actually yeah. am a role model yeah, now. Yeah. And, People it's do actually scary, look really. up to me. Yeah, yeah, I know, it is. <laughs> so what do you think has been the proudest moment of your career so far? I'd probably say this time last year, I went on an England day tour to Australia, yeah. um, which was pretty cool. Um, Did you say day tour? An A tour, oh, so like the Lions tour, I was team. gonna say, you went to Australia for a day. <laughs> day. <laughs> That's a <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> that would be long. Um, definitely got aspirations to play for England. Um, but sort of, I'm realistic in knowing that that's going to come from winning games for Lancashire and scoring loads of runs for them. What about you? What's your proudest moment? Probably say winning the Euros. Yeah, I, I knew I that. Was like, yeah. It's still hard to sort of believe it yeah. now, really. The effect it had on so many people. What I think that's means. what means the most for yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. seeing young girls and young boys realise that things like that are possible. And yeah, yes, yeah, so it's going to be hard to top that. I yeah. tell you that. But I remember watching <laughs> it. I was my a... career at 22. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So how do you think you've coped with the pressure that comes with it? I feel quite almost privileged that it's my job now and I feel like I don't know whether it's the right attitude to have because women's sport should be where it is but I also feel pretty like lucky and grateful that it, that it is it is my full-time job now it's just almost reminding myself why I started playing and just keep trying to enjoy it really what about you yeah I'm exactly the same you don't think of it as a job like I'll just be like oh man I'm training today like and then when people are like oh, I'm at work I'm like work we don't yeah. we don't work <laughs> we're just at training yeah. but Obviously with the Euros and stuff, I think since that, the pressure has just gone up so much as well. I still think of obviously why I fell in love with the game and in the Euros there was a lot of times where I felt like the pressure was on. I had this like wristband on my arm and it's, it just said be brave and I yeah. think that's... Oh, I like that. Bit, yeah. I really like that. Cringy, but... Yeah. <laughs> So not just women's football, how good is it to see just like women's sport in general growing so much? It's nice to see 
everyone succeeding and doing well and women supporting other women as well in all, all different sports. The amount of growth I've seen, like, even in the last few years, is like yeah, drastic hard, it? and yeah. it's sort of crazy and exciting to think of how much it could grow in the yeah. future. Thank you.